Senator Elizabeth Warren called President Trump, Trump, quote, corruption in the flesh at a rally last night. Thousands of supporters went to New York City's Washington Square Park as the 2020 presidential candidate pitched her plan to fight corruption. In her speech, Warren told voters to back the Democrat they feel best shares their values. People are scared. But we can't choose a candidate we don't believe in just because we're too scared to do anything else. Democrats can't win if we're scared and looking backward. We win when we meet the moment. We win when we stand up for what is right. We win when we get out there and fight. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns was at Warren's rally last night, and she joins me now. Caitlin, great to see you. So it appears that Senator Warren is really focusing her message on this idea of electability with those comments. Why is she emphasizing that message? Right. Electability is something that voters are thinking a lot about, mm -hmm. even though they can't necessarily define it, but right. they want to defeat Donald Trump. What's interesting is that over the course of the past few weeks, we've seen in polling that more of her supporters are finding her um, able to defeat Donald Trump, or at least they think that she could be. And this is something that the campaign has been really trying to work on because they've been able to rise slowly but steadily. They've built out a big campaign operation in key early states, uh, but they're still often faced with this question of can you beat Donald Trump, especially as Joe Biden, the front runner in this race, has made that kind of key to his, to his pitch to voters. Uh, so what she was trying to say is that her campaign is about a movement. Uh, she wants this to be about something bigger than herself, but also um, about big ideas. It was interesting. She talks a lot about big structural change. Mm -hmm. And last night, it seemed to become kind of a call and response at mm. the rally, which is not something that I'd seen That's until, interesting. until now. Yeah. So people that are supporting her are supporting this idea of really shaking things up. Right. And so she's trying to say that, you know, to Democrats, don't go with the safe choice you know, a subtle hit at Joe Biden. Uh, if you want to make change, you have to go with someone that is exciting and uh, has, you know, is talking about the things that she's talking about. To some extent, she could be right because historically Democrats have gone uh, with someone that they feel very passionate about. Mm -hmm. uh, but Joe Biden is still leading in polls, still right. has a pretty strong base of support. Uh, and that's certainly a challenge for her. So Senator Warren focused a lot of last night's speech on corruption in Washington. The New York Times compared it to President Trump's speech in New Mexico hours later, saying they laid out competing visions of populism. They wrote Senator Warren's focused on a government comprised by influence of the wealthy while the president denounced a failed liberal establishment. What similarities do you see between the messaging of Senator Warren and the president? Right, an interesting split screen last yeah. night, perhaps a preview uh, if, if the Warren campaign has its way of mm -hmm. the general election right. campaign. Uh, but it's interesting because, you know, I followed Warren uh, in 2014 while she was uh, campaigning for other Democrats. And she would go to places like Kentucky and West Virginia, places that pres then President Obama was not dare to be seen mm. because of uh, um, Democrats wanting to separate themselves from him. Right. And she really, since then, had been talking about kind of this economic populism, this idea that the economy isn't quite working for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of fast forward till now, you have these two very, very different visions for the future in Elizabeth Warren and Donald Trump. But uh, in some ways, they have a, a, a populist pitch. Now, mm -hmm. Donald Trump's campaign is very much based in you know, sort of grievance politics, talking a lot about issues like immigration. His rhetoric is much harsher. Elizabeth Warren is trying to focus on what she believes is an economy that works for those at the very top, and she has um, plans to kind of address that, uh, very much focused on, on income inequality and those sorts of things. But there was this thought that she might be able, with that pitch, to, to appeal to people who want some kind of change, mm -hmm. people who may not see increases in their paychecks or big changes in their everyday lives. The Donald Trump campaign, however, is banking that um, this is more of a, of a cultural kind of issue uh, to some people, the way that they think about the economy. And that's certainly something that he pushed last time and is continuing to do this yeah. time. We'll see how that plays out. So Senator Warren, in the meantime, has endorsed a handful of progressive 
challengers to conservative House Democrats. One of those challengers is Marie Newman, who will face off against Illinois Congressman Dan Lipinski. Newman also received an endorsement today from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Does Warren want to make herself essentially the leader of the pro-progressive strategy across the board? These endorsements are interesting, especially as she's still vying for the Democratic nomination. Right. There's still a long way to go <laughs> right. uh, before that is anywhere close to being over. Uh, but she also endorsed in a Texas primary against Henry Cuellar. Right. Um, she's endorsing people, women especially. Um, getting involved in these primaries uh, is something that is significant. And when she talks at her campaign rallies, she talks about this being a campaign of the grassroots, a campaign not just of, of her, but of all the people that um, have joined in her effort. And so um, this idea, too, of big structural changes she talks about extends to Congress, certainly. And that's what she and others are hoping to do. Before we go, I do want to ask you about Andrew Yang. The 2020 presidential candidate says that he's going to meet soon with Shane Gillis. He's the SNL mm -hmm. cast member who was fired before appearing on the show because of past homophobic and racist remarks, including against Asian Americans. Yang has previously said identity politics are, quote, a great way to lose elections. And earlier this year, I asked Yang about that very topic. Uh, I am the first Asian American man to run for president as a Democrat, and I'm very proud of my heritage and of being Asian American. But I think my race is essentially a non-factor for most of the Americans I talk to around the country. They're just looking for someone whose vision will improve their lives day to day and the lives of their families. Uh, and, and that's, I think, what most Americans are looking for. Is there too much focus, you think, on the idea of identity already heading into 2020? You know, I can't speak for others. Um, I, I will say that the way I approach these problems is to try and uh, put forward solutions that will actually make a difference in people's lives. So, Caitlin, how has Andrew Yang talked about this issue of race and identity on the campaign trail? Well, you know, part of his pitch is that he is someone who is really the opposite of Donald Trump. And the way that he characterizes that is that he calls himself, you know, an Asian who likes math. Mm -hmm. And what better comparison to the president? That's yeah. how contrast he himself contrasts with, himself yeah. with. That's Those are his words. On the debate stage last week, um, he said that, you know, he knew a lot of doctors because he was Asian. Mm -hmm. So he brings this up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, this comments is, that were not necessarily well received exactly, by some of the Asian American community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is um, difficult terrain, certainly mm -hmm. risky terrain to make this, these kinds of, um, and especially for this story, mm -hmm. which has expanded beyond the political realm. Right. Right. A lot of people I know are talking about this story. Sure, it's about cancel not, culture. It's about absolutely yeah, who are not culture. following the everyday politics. Now we often see the intersection of politics and culture. Politics is literally everything these days. Seems like, mm -hmm. um, but but this is a question that I'm curious about, kind of how he navigates this and what the response is from voters to the campaign. It'll be interesting to watch. We'll continue to follow it. Caitlin Huey Burns, always great to see you. Thank you so much.